Have you got a case of the Corona quarantine crazies like a lot of us? I have a great idea for you. This will help with your boredom and maybe put money in your pocket. My name is Audrey Nelson and I've been a commercial photographer for over 40 years. I'm going to show you how to take photographs of things that are laying around your house, gathering dust, things in your closet, things in your drawers, things in your jewelry box or your toolbox. I'll show you how to photograph them and then you can put them on the selling sites like eBay, SD or Facebook. All right, so let's do this. I need a table and I need a chair. That's it. I'm ready to shoot. Since I live in a warm climate, I'm taking advantage of this beautiful exterior. And I always shoot in the shade. There's never a time that you want to shoot in direct sun. It just does not lend well to any image. I used to shoot with my 35 and it was a pain in the you know what because I had to keep changing lenses and um, it was just not working. So what you do when you're shooting products, you do each side. And what I like to do is make sure the sun is hitting the product so it looks the best. And also, you always shoot all the sides, top and bottom. Because when you're shooting something that is not brand new, people want to see what they're getting. Okay. I'm going to do an over shot of this purse the way it is. But you should always make things look as nice as you can. That's why I made the chain in a little circular motion. Because I have a smartphone, I can hold the chain up and shoot the picture too. Watch. Now I'm going to shoot the back and because I have a smartphone I can do both hands. I'm going to push the volume button and that clicks the camera. If you're photographing shoes always make sure the outside of the edge is in front of the camera. If you ever look at any ads that advertise shoes, that's what they do. And I'm using a lighter background this, this time just to emphasize the color of the shoes. I don't want it to blend in. Now I'm going to, again, show all sides of these shoes. People want to see the condition they're in, so it's so easy with a smartphone because you can get in here nice and tight. I just go straight on. I'm going to shoot the back of them. Boop. There we go. And a lot of times I'll put it in portrait because it makes the background a little softer and emphasizes the product itself. Now I'm going to shoot the front of the shoes. Very simple. Make sure all the little things are away. Here we go. Boop. That's shoes. I have a fun knuckle purse that I'm going to sell. And because it has rhinestones, I want to punctuate them. So I'm going to fill in with a mirror. Do you see what it does? It might not show up very easily. But all you do is get some cracked mirrors you got hanging around. Use a little clip. Make sure that's not in the photo when you shoot it. Again, put it on portrait and shoot. Again, because it's a smartphone, you don't have to 
worry about cameras just shoot all the angles so I'm gonna go above now shoot the back of it when I'm shooting purses I always like to shoot the interiors also because people want to know what they look like inside so again because I have a smartphone I can do two-handed right like that got old jewelry in your jewelry box get it out photograph it and sell it it's very simple with a smartphone you just get in nice and tight real simple backgrounds because if you get too involved with the background you'll lose the jewelry so again I'll do several shots because I want to, them to know how big the chain is so I'm going to take a shot of that and again I'll turn it around and I'll do the back it's always good when you're photographing jewelry just to kind of outline the shape of a person's neck so they get a better idea of what it would look like if you're shooting earrings lay them out nice and simple do an overhead shot and I noticed that this particular earring is catching the Sun really nice and this isn't so I'm going to turn it so both have nice gleams to the rhinestones also you got to shoot the backs of earrings because people want to know how they are put on their ears and there we go I want it to look nice and clean so I always look at what I'm shooting to make sure things are in their best light if it's still cold where you are that's not a problem you can shoot inside we're pretending this door is a window because this is the biggest empty area that I have to photograph inside so let me show you what I do here as you can see I have a product that I'm gonna sell on eBay but it looks very dark the reason I'm showing you this is because I always backlight everything it just gives whatever you're photographing more dimension I also made a homemade fill out of aluminum foil on a piece of cardboard then I use this little clamp here to prop that up so now I'm going to fill in a little bit with the statue but as you can see it still looks dark so the only way that to get this product to look gorgeous is on your iPhone or your Android you put your finger right on the product and you'll see a little yellow square then there's a little sunshine on the right so what you do is you pull up on the sunshine and you'll see that the product brightens up quite a bit there we go it's always a good idea to edit your photos what I do first is I go to this little square at the bottom press that roll up where it says duplicate duplicate the image because if you don't and you make changes to the image and you don't like it you're stuck with it at least if you duplicate it you have a copy of the original then you go up to here to edit press that there's this little looks like a little firecracker parker thing you can play with that see what that does to the image see how it changes quite a bit go to the next one exposure I usually don't deal with because normally I like the exposures brilliance I will play a little bit with that as you can see how it's filling in this little area here which is kind of nice highlights I'm not gonna bother with shadows I like to play with it seems to add contrast or less contrast I think I'm doing a little less contrast because it fills in this nice filigree here contrast I'm not gonna bother with brightness I'm not gonna bother with 
Black Point is also another one just like Shadows where it adds, that looks very flat, which is too flat for me now. Then this adds some dimension to this piece. You gotta watch saturation. I notice a lot of amateurs love to saturate everything. Please don't, because it's not natural. If you have to add something, do a little vibrance. You can add that. You can see the difference it makes. That almost looks like it's going black and white. And then this to this side of the slider is a little bit more brilliant, but you don't have to worry about it much. Warmth, we don't need. Tint, we don't need. Sharpness, you can add a little, but again, be careful with that because it gets a little overstated sometimes. Definition, you can add a little. Because of all the folds in this piece of pottery, it looks real pretty this way. Noise reduction, if you're outside, that kind of helps. We're not, but you can play with that. And this is vignette. It's kind of fun. It almost highlights the image. Done. Before you photograph and post things on the selling sites, go to eBay and check out things that are similar to the things that you're selling. If they're not valuable enough, it's not worth the effort. I hope I've helped you today and given you a little bit of fun things to think about. Be creative, not be bored, and put some money in your pocket. If you really enjoyed this, click that little subscribe link below and I will do some more videos. You have a blessed day.